Алло, шелом, раз тефари, ме раз ядинос тефари, нейн. I am Wendem, brother Yadam. And we're going to get into the 46th Torah portion reading and feeding. And this Torah portion reading and feeding, as every Torah portion reading and feeding, we should remember um, Deuteronomy chapter 6, chapter 4 actually, verse 6, which says, This is I and I wisdom. And wisdom, in other words, is technology. I want you to take a note of that, of the Amorit, of the disciples, all the students, all those who have come prepared for this Torah portion study. And study of the Torah is very, very important as a foundation, as a groundation to we Ethiopian Hebrews, Yovas, and especially to us as the Rastafari elect. As we said, the Rastafari of every nation is really the elect of that people, you understand? And so by carrying that name, you have a, a very important representative role. But what is it that you truly represent? His Majesty says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. You understand? The glory of His Imperial Majesty. So let us get into this Torah portion reading and feeding. And we also hope to have some call conferencing. Um, some various some call conferences, but we're looking for ones and ones um, to take the responsibility to basically be the host for that, so that we can network and link with those as well. We all have to take you know all hands on deck at this time. But the main thing really is the hands on the scripture, the hands on the study, growing and learning, because we learn as it begins to through the Holy Spirit and through through that new birth in Yeshua HaMoshiach as that veil starts to come off our eyes, as we start to be able to see and recognize, you understand, then we can truly see what our various gifts and our callings are for and how all things work towards the good of those who are um, called, you understand, all things work toward the good of those who are called by God. You understand according to his his purpose. So let's learn more about his purpose in this forty sixth Torah portion, reading and feeding, known as Ikev. So this uh Rastafari sabbatical study right is number forty six, right? And it's called I Kev, right? Now I Kev Bamarinya in the heart, it is called let's see if we have enough room for this right here. Um it's called in the him, right? In the him ye ho na lit, right? In Dehem Yehonah. Now, in Dehem Yehonah means, and, and like this, it will be. And like this, it will be. It can be translated, and like this, it may be, too. You understand? Like this, it will be. Like this, it will become. Like this, it may be. Now, let us just prepare this right here. And, of course, get your Torah portion. Um, the Torah portion, reading and feeding um, chart. You guys should know what this is right here. This right here. You can download this, and you should have already downloaded this. The brothers and sisters who have been studying with us, and those who are new to this, um, can go to our website, www.lojsociety.org, and you can look for the Sabbath House reading. And we're up to page uh, six and the bottom of page six um, in Dehem Yehonah. And there it goes right there. Let's get a little bit of light on this. You can see it right there, right? In Dehem. So here's where we're at right here on page six. All right? So these are the three readings one, two, and three, right? So this is the base, right? This is the Torah reading right here. So that particular reading from right there is um, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 12. So let's turn our Bibles to Deuteronomy 
chapter chapter 7 and we go to verse 12 and verse 12 is um, in the Schofield Study Bible it says uh, uh, it's subs there's a subscription there and it says the promise of victory promise of victory, right? The promise of victory. That we have a promise and the surety of victory, especially when we are in his way. It's the way, the truth and the life that protects us, that 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 is our provision, that is our blessing. So it says right here, and wherefore it shall come to pass. It says, if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God, that Yahweh thy Elohim, shall keep to thee the covenant, the Kal Kidan, the word agreement, the Kal Kidan, the covenant, and the mercy, the Mehirat, the mercy which he swear to thy fathers. So we have to recognize that we as as ethnic um, um, Israel, or what we call black Israel, and we have to use these these uh, proofs right here, these proofs and these truths right here. We the black Jews, right, or the black Jews of Harlem, right, and we point to this because it's a very, very um, important text. and. There are also other books that concern in Rastafari, such as this one right here, which speaks of some of our um, forefathers. And this is a pretty good um, testimony of Dr. Gladstone Robinson, um, the late Fikra Salase. And there's so many of our forefathers, Dr. Malakwa Emmanuel Bayan. And we have this particular book right here in the sand. And this is where we get a very important um, through this brother right here um, was like the angel of his imperial majesty, the apostle of our goodwill. The Maui Haila Salase calls him. He's also one of I and I um, forefathers, right? Um, and then, I mean, we're speaking of more recent time, you understand, but then we can really go through the, the litany of our ancestors. You know, and we have actually studied, you know, these ancestors going all the way back to the scriptures, all the way back to the Bible. You know, we have to know who we are in spirit, you understand, know, in the spiritual new birth, and who we are in truth as the people. You understand know, that we are that seed people. You understand. Know, now we know that there's a remnant. You understand, know, and, and we we um, work. You'll send in faith and through our faith to be of that remnant. But there's a promise here of victory, right? There's a promise of victory. So the first thing we want to do, getting into this Torah portion, reading and feeding, right, is to um, remind ones of uh, uh, Devarim, right? This is this is the Devarim, the Hebrew book of Deuteronomy, and it's a Torah portion volume volume 5 and we hope and pray that all are able to get you know the full five volumes you understand you have as a hard copy yes you can get it off the internet you understand you can check on the Wikipedia if you download our chart you'll see that the second um, after the, the slash the is bar right or the his bar the slash is the Hebraic and you can look that up, you know, look up that, and then you can find that on the internet and use that for right now until you can get a hard copy. But it's very important that we get a, you know, a hard copy, certain documents, you know, that we need because we're in a time that we need to have the contingency plans. You know, saying? but the first foundational um, key is to. Um, the, the, the spiritual house, we have to have our spiritual house in order. We have to get our spiritual house in order. You know what I'm saying? The faith. This is what we've been speaking on and teaching and preaching uh, and proclaiming 
on the faith and those faith based you understand those faith based keys. You know, was um Yeshua Hamoshi says that, you know, um, one who hears his words and, and, and does them, he likens to a wise man. Remember he says the, the Torah, he says, Torah, this is our wisdom. You know what I'm saying? In the sight of all the nations, this is our technology. You know what I'm saying? It seems like foolishness to some folks right now. You know what I'm saying? But when it comes to fulfillment, it will be proven and they will say exactly what John says they will say. You know what I'm saying? So now let's um first of all turn to this particular portion right here. And we're gonna go to page uh, for I I Kev. Alright, on page uh, one twenty eight. Mm-hmm. Now, page 128, right? 128, it says, I, and it's spelled a couple of, a couple of different ways, I, Kev. Now, what's interesting about I, Kev is that when you study the linguistics of it, you have like, Ya, Iko, Ya, Iko, Ikev, Ikev, Ya, Iko. So, I want to I, I, I um, make this likeness right here. I'm going to write it by Marinia. Right, we have Ya, we have E, and we have Ko. So we have Ya, right, or really, so like that. Let's take that off. We have Ya, E, right, Q, as a Q, O, V. So we have Ya, right, and E, Ko. It cold, right? Ya it cold. Or Jacob, right? We have Jacob. Now, Jacob is interesting, the name Jacob, because some interpret Jacob to be the heel, the heel grabber because of his name and his birth, um, the wrestling that took place in the womb of um of the mother of 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 uh uh, uh I think it was a Ribka. You know what I'm saying? Rebecca, Rebecca, that, that wrestling took place in her womb. And this is sort of the scarlet thread that it was Jacob who, who, who put his hand forth. So he, it really, he came out the womb of his hand came out and the nurse tied the scarlet thread. But they were wrestling. The two sons were wrestling. Jacob and Esau was wrestling in the womb of the mother, right? And then when Esau actually came out first, fully came out first, but grabbing onto Esau's Esau's heel was Jacob. Now this is interesting when we understand more about who is Jacob and who is Esau, Esau the Hazar, so forth and so on, that part of the revelation of the story. Um and that and that um uh uh Jacob now, in, in, in Isra, in the apocryphal book of, of, of Estrus, or, or Ezra, there is, um, there is a revelation where Isra, or Ezra is asking an angel, or messenger of Jah, um, asking God concerning the latter days, the new age, and the latter days, and he said that this, this new age will come, the, the space, the space between the old age and the new age is like the space between the heel of Esau or Esau, right, and the hand of Yaakov, right. So I think that's interesting when we think about the name um, Ikev, right? Ikev. Now Ikev, uh, a simple, basic Hebrew translation for Ikev is if in the sense of if you follow, if you follow. So when we read this again, um, verse uh, 12 of Deuteronomy chapter um, 7, it says, Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken, if you like follow through, if we follow through, if we shema, if we hear, if we 
feel this and become obedient to these judgments and keep them and do them, it says that the Lord thy God, that Yahweh Eloheinu, shall keep to us the covenant and the mercy which he swore to our ancestors, to our patriarchs, to our forefathers. This is very, this is, this is key. So in other words, if we are faithful with our part of the covenant, he will be faithful with his part of the covenant. Now in true faith, there's no doubt. You know saying? There's no doubt. The old was saying we have confidence, we have trust in that because our main be Yeshua's name. Our main be Christ's name. All right? Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. He is the Amen. So this is the second word and the first distinctive word in this portion, in this kufa, right? In this Torah portion. Now this is the 46th weekly Torah portion of Parasha in our annual Judaic or, or Jewish black Hebrew cycle of Torah reading or Rit Min Bab. And it's the third, this is now the third in the book of Deuteronomy. This is the third reading in the book of Deuteronomy. It comprises Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12, to Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 25. So we as black Jews, or Ethiopian Hebrews, and elect Ras Tafari, we in the diaspora, in this exile, this, this captivity, this dispersion, we generally would read it in August, and we're in the month of August 2012. Now, a brief summary, we'll begin off with a brief summary, right? A brief summary of what is contained in this particular um, Torah portion. And a brief summary is that, first of all, there is the blessings of obedience, right? The blessings of obedience. Secondly, is the taking of the land, the taking of the land. Thirdly is the golden calf. Fourthly is Aaron or Haron's Aaron's death. Fifthly is the Levitical duties. And the sixth portion is the exhortations. The exhortations, the the counsel or the advice to serve Jah, to serve Yah, to serve Hashem, Ha Elohim, Baruch Hu. Now, first of all, Moses, he begins off, Musa, by telling the Beta Israel, the Israelites, that if they obey John's rules, if they obey his, his words, his rules, his judgments, it, it mentions them as judgments, right? That John would faithfully maintain the covenant, maintain the al Kidan, and he would bless them with fertility and agricultural productivity. So when we talk about sustainable, you know what I'm saying, sustainable agriculture, sustainability, you know what I'm saying, the, the true sustainability is in the al Kidan, is in the covenant, right? And he would war off, ward off sickness. You know what I'm saying, that means he would banish and prevent sickness and disease. I mean this is this is this this is this is this is wonderful. You understand? But for a lot of folks it seems too wonderful. You know what I'm saying? Because they you know, they trust in in men and people and others and we see continually I mean and let's look at America right now. America is is, is on the verge of a famine. You know it's on the verge of a famine. I mean if you've been paying even a little bit of attention you understand? You see how the crops have been destroyed. There's fires over here. There's floods over there. Prices are going up. People losing their jobs. Because what's going on in this time? This is 2012. You know, this is not to get into Planet X or or or, or Nibiru. You understand? Or the Destroyer, or some must call it the Passover Comet, or the 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 Star of the Eighth Millennium. You know what I'm saying? But it's real. You know what I'm saying? It's real. And we see the effects of it. So we're, we're dealing with the evidence, not speculation, my brothers and sisters. 
not speculations. You understand? But this is heavy, heavy evidence. Now, now let us let us uh, let's see. Here we go. All right. So let us first of all get our Bamarinya, the Metzhaf Kedus of Negus and Negus, right? The Book of the Seven Seals, and so we can follow along Bamarinya. Right in the Amharic, so chapter seven, when Orit Zedagin, Bamarinya Orit means the Torah, and Ze is of Dagin, or Orit is Gutis actually, from the Gutis, Orit is Torah, or we call it the Ethiopic Torah. Ze means of, and Dagin, Dagin means the repetition. So this is the Torah of the repetition. So we're in, um, Verse 12. So, as would be done in uh, Mikura, or as would be done in, um, say, a synagogue or a churchical gathering, I'm going to read this first portion from verse 12 to verse uh, 16. All right? The Sama'a, where well, where men says it could do, Ahadu, Amlak. And then we look, in Dihem Yohona, Yehitchen, Ferd, Semte, a bit of a bukata, a bit of a garten, Amlake, Egeziavi Herla Batoche, Yamalawin Kal Kidanam Hereta Leante, Yet a big lahal, Ye wedded Himal, Ye barrick Himal. Ya bezahim mal, ye set him zen, la bato chehe, be malalacho midder, ye hold the hin of ray, ye maray, ye maray to hinim of ray, a hillin, wine hinim, zay to hinim, ye cup to hinim, bizat, ye beggar hinim amenga. Ye barik lehal, ye barik lehal. Ka ahzabim ahulu wa yilika yetabarik tohonale. Be sawe sawe hina, be kaptehim azenda wend bihon waim seita bitohon mekan ayahon bihim. Egziab harim himamin. Ulu Kaante Yarka Yemitawa Kaunima Kufuina Yegibit Beshita Hulu, the Ante Lai Aya Aya Darissa Bihim, Bet Alatochi Himma Hulu Lai Yamet Abachua Amlaki Himegiziabi Hera de Ije. Asalfo yemit lachwin azabin hulua tat efachwal oin him atazin lachwin yam wet med yahon bahalena am likato chachwin atam likacho amen so Let's go over this right here. All right? Let's go over this right here. So we have read to verse 16. So verse 16, from verse 13, reading on, And he will love thee and bless thee. I want you to, make, to pay careful attention to the word bless. In fact, for this Torah portion, put the blessing. Write down the blessing. I want you to understand this word and understand the context of the blessing. You understand? And the, and this idea of blessing is not just an Old Testament idea of blessing, but it's the fulfillment for this remnant in the birth Hadasha, in the Hadith Kidan, in the New Covenant. Right? So it says, and he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee, and he will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn, and thy wine and thine oil, the increase of thy king 
and the flocks of thy sheep. The king is the cattle, right? In the land which he swear to thy fathers, to our ancestors, to give thee, to give we, thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. Verse 15. And the Lord, Yahweh, Egziaviher, Lotus, Hat, will take away from thee all sickness, all disease, all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. So all of those who hate us, when we come into the fullness of the covenantal agreement in Christ, in Yeshua, you know what I'm he will take away all those diseases, and they will be put away from us, but upon the haters. Not just among other people. Those people who hate us, you know what I'm saying? Those diseases are coming for you. So haters, keep on hating. Verse 16 says, And thou shalt consume all the people which Yahweh thy Elohim shall deliver thee. Thine eye shall have no pity upon them, neither shalt thou serve their gods, for that will be a sneer. That will be, Bamarinya says, a wet med. Wet med is like a trap, a trap to catch animals, like a hunter lays a trap. So that will be a trap to us. Now, let us pause here for a moment, because this is the verse, verse uh, 16, right? Because the next portion is going to touch on taking the land, on possessing the land. Now, um, there's, a, there's a verse in the New Testament. There's a, um, there's a verse in the New Testament that speaks about um, obedience, um, when our obedience is fulfilled. When our obedience is fulfilled. Let me see if I can find that, brothers and sisters. Um, Alba just, just reminded me of this. And I didn't prepare this before you could talk, but this, this idea just came to eye right here. So you can see this in the New Testament sense. It's important for us to understand this in its New Testament. Remember, the, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, and the New Testament is the Old revealed. So in reading Torah, we have to read it with that veil removed. You understand? So we can see clearly the substance, you understand, when our obedience, um, let's see, obedience um, is uh, fulfilled, let's see right here, um, this is obedience, okay, I think it is uh, 2 Corinthians um, 10 and 6, 2 Corinthians 10 and 6. Let's put this on the side and let's go. Come with me to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 10 and 6. Let's see. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6. It says, And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, when your obedience, when our obedience is fulfilled. Now, now, what's the context of this for a moment, right? And um, it says right here in Second Corinthians, it says the vindication of Paul's apostleship. Then it speaks on another subscription here, the divine authentication. You know, saying, you know what it means to have something authenticated. You know, when you get, when you have. Um, whether it's maybe a piece of jewelry or something else, a tr piece of treasure or a ray or something, and it has to be authenticated to make sure that it's genuine. It's not counterfeit, but it's the authentic, right? Now, there's some New Testament verses here, right? But this one is not here, but the Holy Spirit has 
has given this to me to share with you all. So let's go through it. Paul says, we're going to read up to verse uh, 6. Paul says, now I, Paul, myself beseech. That means I beg. I'm begging you. You know what I'm saying? By the meekness and the gentleness of Mashiach, of Christos, who in presence am base among you, but being absent am bold towards you. But I beseech you, I'm begging you, that I may not be bold when I am present. So I'm bold when I'm away from you for your good, but I, 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 I don't want to be bold when I'm present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some. So the boldness is not for those who are the humble ones, but a lot of the ones who are the grumble ones, right, in that, in that sense. Um, um, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. There are some who think that, well, the reasons why we're doing this is for all sort of crazy reasons. You know what I'm saying? Like, we study these things and rise up early and spend hours in preparation, hours in recording, and sometimes even hours in putting things up there and out there to reach and teach and, 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 and do our part in John's work and John's will. Some, you know, as Paul says it best right here, they think of us as if we walk according to the flesh, as though we're doing this for some carnal, fleshy, material, and worldly reason. They just don't get it. Verse 3 says, For though we walk in the flesh, you know, and although we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. I said, see, that's why I think this is very important to connect this. In fact, in my notes right here, I want to take this right down, 2 Corinthians 10 and 6. You know what I'm saying? 2 Corinthians 10 and 6. Because it, it connects with this Torah portion and with this time and this season. For I and I the once lost, but now found me to Israel. So though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. But it's the spiritual warfare, right? Verse 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not carnal. They're not fleshy. They're not worldly. But mighty through God, mighty through Hashem, Baruchu, blessed be He, to the pulling down of strongholds, spiritual strongholds. Um, check out the vid on the spiritual warfare that we put up recently on Ephesians. Ephesians, uh, I think it's uh, chapter 6. And, and, and that was just getting into it. J just laying down some of the basics. But see how that connects with the message in this Torah portion, the 46, the Rastafari Sabbatical Study, RSS number 46, ICAF, in Dihim Yehona. And remember Jacob, Yaakov. And also remember this great tribulation, right? And Jacob's trouble. And it says, and if, if, that's a conditional, you know what I'm saying? In Yehona, it will be like this, or it might be like this. But what be like this? This is the promise of victory. This portion in the Schofield Study Bible tells us that this particular Torah portion, chapter 7, verse 12 of Deuteronomy, is the promise of victory. Right? And what is Paul speaking about right here? He is speaking to some. He's speaking boldly, but he's not seeking to be bold against the humble ones, but being bold against those who think something different, who think something strange, who are thinking in a fleshy, worldly way. He's reminding them that although we walk in the flesh, although we walk in so-called mortality, we are man and we are mortal, Right? We do not war after the flesh. You understand? Know For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. Mighty through God, through the King of Kings, to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5, casting down imaginations. And this is as, as the days of Noah were, so shall it be. Right? In these days and times. Right? And in Noah's day, 
it's like the imaginations of their heart. You understand? There's a bunch of vain imaginations against the dignity and divinity of his majesty. But those are cast down. We cast down those imaginations. And every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge. Right? That's why it's important to know the truth. You understand? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Whom the Son has free is free indeed. So every imagination casting them down, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity. So we who were in captivity, he brings us out so that we may cast down all the imaginations, the high things that exalt itself against the knowledge, against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought. Are you over that? Not every person, but every thought. Bringing those thoughts into captivity. You know what I'm saying? To the obedience of Mashiach. To the obedience of Christos. To the obedience of Christ in his kingly character. Verse 6. And having in a readiness... That means we have to be ready. We have to prepare ourselves, right, to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Then verse 7 says, do ye look on things after their outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christos, that he belongs to Christ, let him of himself think this again. You know, that as he is Christ, some say, well, this one over there is Christ, and that one is, well, as they think they're Christ, think about it again. Because as they are Christ, right, as he is Christ, even so are we Christ, that we belong to Christ as well. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which Adonai hath given us for what? edification for building up. So Paul, who are you, Paulus is saying that he has more authority. You can see in a sense how he's likened to Moses, even when they asked him, are you that Egyptian? You know, saying, making a kind of a likeness to Moses who led his people out. They asked who are you, Paulus, the very same thing, which kind of tells you a lot of other things too, that he was a black man, an Ethiopian. You know, because he compared him to an Egyptian in that time when clearly they recognized that the Egyptians are black, right? So it says, for though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which Adonai have given us. So who has given Paul this authority? Who has given I and I this authority? It's not I and I given I and I this authority, but it's Adonai. It's the king of kings who has given this authority for what purpose? For the purpose of edification. What is edification? Edification is building up. Look it up. Building up. And not for your destruction. Not for your destruction. I should not be ashamed that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters, by fidel. By, don't be terrified by the fidel. For his letters say they are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. So they were judging Hawadi of Paulos by how he looked. But he said, man, that, that, that brethren can write a heavy letter. You know but look at him. His body, he, he's, he's, not, he's not big and, and, and going to the gym and weightlifting, but he's powerful. He's powerful in all what the Memphis produced, right? And it says, let such a, and one, like let such a one think this. Let them think this, that such as we are in word by letters, when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. He said, there's no difference if my letters are heavy, I'm heavy too. Don't judge me by my appearance, is what Hawaii Apollos is saying. He says, for we did not make ourselves of the number. I'm not, he's not trying to compare himself of the chosen ones before of the, 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 the 11 disciples. 
you don't have that number, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, or others that are, you know, commending themselves as though they be something. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, they're not wise. They're not wise. They're blowing their own trumpet. But we will not boast of things without our measure. But according to the measure of the rule, the rule which God, which Jah hath distributed to us, a measure to reach even to you. He's saying that the, that the authority has been given. Remember, he's speaking to many different churches, many different um, converts or ones who, it's like today, I and I are speaking to many different Rastafari. Some are in different mansions, some are in different groups, some of different nations, some of different races. You know what I'm saying? Um, and different faces. You know what I'm saying, so to speak. But he's saying still that Jah has given I and I this measure of rule. Right? He has distributed this to us. You know what I'm saying? A measure that reaches to you. You understand? For we stretch not ourselves beyond measure. You say, oh, you're doing too much now, brethren. That's too much. We're not stretching ourselves beyond measure as though we reach not to you, like we can't reach you. You understand? For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ. As we are coming to you preaching the gospel. Let's get this right here. The gospel or the good news of Kedamawi Haila Shalati, the gold hymn the good news of him, the gospel of his imperial majesty. All right? As he preached of the Son, we preach of the Father, and they are one. Not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors. We're not boasting about, you know, what other men have done. You understand? But in the Holy Spirit, we are doing that aspect of the work that he has called us for. But having hope, we have expectation. When your faith is increased, so we keep teaching on the hymen notes, on the amen, you understand, and making this real to you so you can receive it, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly to preach, to proclaim the Wengel, to proclaim the good news in regions beyond even where you're at. Right? And not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. So it's not to take from, say, well, another brethren or some of the other proclaimers of Rastafari, so forth, and so done. No. This is why when we're speaking about Malaku Bayan, which other Rastafari group, you know what I'm have spoken of Malaku or Minor You know what I'm saying? Not just as Ethiopian World Federation, but as a Rastafari. You know what I'm saying? Yes, he, a Rastafari. You know what I'm saying? Recognize him. You know what I'm saying? Or of Dr. Gladstone Robinson. You know what I'm saying? So we're not, others have not done this. Others have not proclaimed this. And it's similar to what Paul is saying right here. To preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. Not like prepackaged for us. Nah. But he that glory, let him glory in Adonai. He who glories, let him glory in Jah, Rastafari. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom Adonai, who Jah, Rastafari, commends. So we're not commending I and I self. In fact, sometimes we, you know, we, we just ask the Holy Spirit, you know, to bless the message, and, and we really wonder, are, are we getting through to y'all? Like, you know, and even doing this recording, you're like, you know, you know, will the brethren and sister and will they receive this? I, we hope and pray that you will. But the main point is that what Paul said, um, having in readiness, right, to, to avenge, you understand, all disobedience, when our obedience is fulfilled. So when our obedience in Torah is fulfilled, right? What does he say right here? He says right here, he says right here that 
and the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of the Americas or of the Babylonians, which thou knowest. We know about these evil diseases. He won't put none of them on us, but he will lay them upon all that are haters of Rastafari, that are haters of black Israel, of the Ethiopian Hebrews. But then he says something interesting here. He says, and thou shalt consume all the people whom the Lord thy God shall deliver thee, shall consume them, cons destroy them. The old saying, shall destroy them. It says, thine eye, and this is the key thing, we highlighted this in our scripture right here, thine eye shall have no pity upon them, neither shalt thou serve their gods, for that will be a sneer to thee. Now, just on a, on a side note, brothers and sisters, you know, yes, we know we, we, we're, we're Africans as far as black people, as far as we're not of this tribe or that tribe, but the Beta Israel, as far as the 12 tribes, and the Judah, Yehuda in, in particular. When we look at Africa, you know, a lot of times when we reason with brothers and sisters, they're like, oh, look what happened to the Africans. And say, oh, Babylon, 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 you know. And I've noticed as I start to grow in, in Torah, as His Holy Spirit illuminates I and I, and I and I become um, I'm clearer on this, I, I really don't feel this pity a lot of times. Like, oh, for example, even when we see the so called famine pictures in Ethiopia or Africa, yes, it's sad, yes, it's unfortunate, but, um, what God are they worshiping? You know, what what what, what did they do? It, see, Torah tells us that there were other people who were in the land too, right? Before the day to Israel. And as we go further in this Torah portion, this particular 46th portion, reading and feeding, we'll learn that there were things they did that caused the true landlord, you know what I'm saying, and John is the true landlord to evict them, right? To convict them and to evict them. And he warns us through the prophet not to do the similar things, otherwise we too would be. Now we know I and I history from Babylon to Timbuktu, Valley of the Dry Bones, so we recognize that our ancestors did not heed, they did not take heed to themselves, they did not heed that warning, and thus we are what we are, we're where we're at, the old percent. Now, in the same way, this land that we go into, you know what I'm saying, and our African lands and our Ethiopian lands is virtually in the same sort of condition. And the part where it says that that, that line I, we know it's that very interesting that mm, it's saying thine I shall not, shall have no pity upon them. It, it really seems harsh that we are not to have any, for example, even on the Facebook, ones will show pictures of these people and those people here and there and elsewhere, and look what the white man did, and look what happened here, tribalism there, so forth and so on, and we'll pity these people, and we'll do these fundraisers, and that. And we think that by doing that, this is what's in accordance with our Kala Kidan, but it's obvious from the word and that is not. Now, I know it's going to be a little bit harsh for ones to really get it. Some folks are going to say, oh, wow, are you saying that we shouldn't feel sorry for poor and starving and dying people here or there um, in Africa? I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm saying they have to get right with Jah. You understand? They have to get right with Jah. Are, are they our brethren or sisterin according to Kala Kida? Whether Old Testament or even New Testament, you understand? Know Whichever sense, if you want to say in the Old Testament sense, are they our brethren? In the New Testament sense, are they our brethren? And it's a shame that in the Old Testament, okay, maybe they're not our brothers in the Old Testament, but at least in the New Testament they could be. But they're not. They have other gods. They worship other gods. They serve other gods, right? And us now having a, a pity for them, you know what I'm saying, almost becomes 
a service to their gods, right? And then that becomes a sneer. That becomes a... Okay. Let me give you an example in this Torah portion reading and feeding. A good example would be the Mohammedans, right, in certain parts of, of East Africa, whether Somalia or the other region. Remember, a little while ago, there was there been all this kind of um, you know, Al-Shabaab, and they still are around doing terrorism, killing people for, you know, spook God and other kind of things and, and, and crazy stuff. Um, and then they had a famine. And everybody like, oh, look at all them. And the first thing I was doing when I was looking at it, I was like, are they Muslims? Are they Mohammedans? And it's very interesting because they now, the women and the children, the old people, are coming to get food. And I think that we should still do good for them in Christ. You understand? On that level of in Christ. But don't you see the hypocrisy? I don't know if you really pick up on what I'm saying. I mean, that, that wasn't my main message, but I just think that's kind of interesting that this particular verse here that the Holy Spirit had me highlight where it says, Thine eyes shall have no pity upon them, neither shalt thou serve their gods, for thou will be a sneer, for that will be a sneer to thee. That will be a sneer. That will be a trap. Mm -hmm. And so what we'll do is we'll get on this kind of like um, follow the white man kind of a trend. You know, oh, let's do a such and such and let's such and such move us on. But yet we're not taking, in other words, there's a saying, it's not biblical, but there's a saying that charity begins at home and spreads abroad. I think that's the point behind this verse right here where it says that thine eye shall have no pity upon them, neither shall thou serve their gods. Because saying that their gods is the same as our God. We know there's only one true God. You understand? Know but let's observe if we will. You understand? Know they say they're killing Christians throughout Africa. You understand? Know and this is what they're doing. And let's, let's understand that. They persecuted Hebrews throughout Africa. You understand? Know they sold many of us to the West. You understand? Know let's recognize. Let's, let's look at the real deal now. You understand? Know let's, let's look at reality. And now we, after 400 years, and still some of them say that we're not Africans and we have no part in Africa. Many, many ones and ones will come that way. But as soon as something happens, they will turn to us or we will turn on the pity. You know what I'm saying? And we don't really see that sneer. See, it's that sneer that we get into. We don't really recognize that sneer. So I'm just pointing that out, brothers and sisters, on that particular level right there. So this is the first part. This is the first part is where is where um, the blessing. There's a blessing of obedience, and there's a blessing for obedience. Moses telling the Beit Israel that if the key word is if, that means it's a choice. We're not made to do it, but if. We're already told that if we do this, it's like a contract, like an agreement. If we do this, he will do his part. And we showed you also in the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 10 and 6, right? He has in readiness to revenge and avenge all disobedience. It's like Burhana Salase, Bob Marley had said. He said if um, when he was asked about the famine in Ethiopia, he said that if they do not recognize Haile Selassie the first, right, in his imperial palace in Ethiopia, then them suffer and dead. If they don't want to recognize who we are as Beta Israel, then them suffer and dead. John says that that land, he will move them out of that land. We don't have to worry about, oh, they're taking this, oh, they don't recognize. See, that means you're looking at them as though they're your God, but not our God. You understand? They have false gods. Now, should they see the light of truth and come over to the truth, then we can receive them. You understand? But if they continue to worship their false gods, we're to have no pity on them, whether they are starving or whatever else. Like if they're fighting against us too and terrorizing us, let us wake up, brothers and sisters. Let us really wake up and recognize 
who we are, and we've been over here for 400 plus years. You understand? Know and besides Imperial Ethiopia, under Minyalik first, right, and under Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie the first, they're the only ones that took an interest in I and I as lost sheep, once lost but now found beta is Raya. You understand? Let us recognize that. I think it's very, very important to recognize. So, brothers and sisters, this is the first part of I care. There's much more to this. We're going to take a little pause for the cause and come back in the next part with the rest of this. So, Shalom Rastafari. Shabbat Shalom.